Hey everybody, so today's video is going to be a how I edit my vlogs. It's gonna be a timeline breakdown in Premiere Pro of writing vlog 19, which I posted about a month ago. I have actually been wanting to make this video for about a year now, but I couldn't think of a, like a coherent way to show you how to edit. I will disclaim though, this video is definitely not for beginners. I'm not necessarily doing a tutorial. It's more me showing you how I go about editing my process, not really a how to. This is just more of a breakdown on how I go about editing my vlogs. Before we get into this, I just wanted to talk about gear really fast. So first, I just want to mention what camera I film on. I'm filming on it right now, so I can't show you. I use my iPhone 8. I've been using my iPhone 8 for a while now. That's what I film most of my videos on. I have a fancy dancy DSLR. It's too old. It doesn't have a flip out screen, so it's just too difficult for me to film videos on there. And I love filming with the iPhone. It's really, really easy. And I will cut in a clip of me from last year who was actually filming this video. I just never finished it. So my hair is blue. I look completely different of me talking about the rest of the setup, which includes tripod and microphone. I edit in Premiere Pro. I've been editing in Premiere Pro for about three years now. I've tried to make it comprehensive, but if you have any questions or if this gets confusing, let me know in the comments and I will try to clarify in the best way possible. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Let's blast to the past in 2019 of me talking about my gear and then we'll go into me actually editing the vlog. Like I said, I'm going to be first starting with gear. This is my old laptop. <laughs> so this is the Dell Inspiron 13. Do I fully recommend it? I would say yes, but then it's being held together by binder clips. Sarah's is fine though, so it's not bad if you want a two-in-one, like the touch device that you can like flip over. So this is the tabletop tripod that I have. Personally, it's I'm sitting on Harry Potter books because it's not tall enough. And then on top of that, I have this little selfie stick mount, which is metal. This was kind of pricey. I think it was like 20 bucks, but it's the, one of the best buys because it's really sturdy. So it has the horseshoe mount, as you can see, which is where the microphone will slip in. And that's why I got this. But this right here is my Rode Video Micro. If you are uh, trying to plug it directly into your phone, the only thing is you have to get a different cable. Hi there. Welcome to the inside of my screen. So right now I am in iTunes and I'm in iTunes because this is where all of my video editing starts with music for the vlogs in particular. I obviously don't use music in my talking head videos and the process is a lot simpler for those videos. One day I can show you how I edit my talking head videos if anyone's wondering and I can go a little bit more in depth on that since that's a bit easier to be like technical about. Some of my inspirations, I'm gonna talk about that right now, my editing inspirations. I've had a few but the main one was Andrew Kearns, his very old vlogs, his very early ones. He was the original inspiration for me to get Premiere Pro and start learning video editing and really branded like and shaped the way I edit. Somebody who inspired like my thumbnail style and sort of like adding little animations is Ashley's Lens. And so that was pretty foundational too when I was first getting my footing. And then somebody else who has majorly influenced the way that I edit is Ewan McIntosh. I, I love the way that Ewan edits and he hasn't uploaded a video in a while, but I would highly recommend checking out his videos. There's like masterpieces every single one of them. And a more recent inspiration is Ashley from Best Dressed and she's quite popular on YouTube now, but I've been following her for a few years. Her videos I love watching because she's a very excellent editor. The vlogs always start with music. And so I've actually debated quite a lot whether or not I want to use copyright music anymore on my vlogs. When I got into editing my vlogs, I actually started using copyright music. And that's just because I was more interested in storytelling than copyright. My channel is still not monetized. And back then it was definitely not monetized. I probably only had like a hundred or something subscribers. I don't use a song if it will ban my video in 258 countries, just because I want as many of you guys to be able to watch it. Not that I want reach. It's just like if I had a viewer from a country who couldn't view the video because of the song, I would feel pretty bad about it. So I just make sure that the song won't either get the video taken off of YouTube or it won't be banned in countries. I'm not too concerned about monetization. Obviously my my videos aren't monetized right now, but if they ever are monetized, I'm not really concerned about that, especially for the writing vlogs because they're kind of my masterpieces. I really put my pride and joy into making them and the music is a big part of it. And I just love using 
music to create a cinematic narrative. I often will use smaller bands. We're looking at my library so we can see some Billie Eilish here. We see some Nothing But Thieves here, obviously, and we see some Surf Curse and just some various artists. I would never use a Billie Eilish song in my video because that would probably immediately be flagged. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of current joys that we're looking at and a lot of surf curse which would be lower in my library like right here i would recommend checking by exporting a video and then putting it like on private or unlisted and seeing what the copyright claims say if you're really worried about it the song that i used in the video that i'm breaking down is a current joy song from wild heart it is called i'm terrified i kind of randomly pick this one usually when i'm starting a vlog i'll just scroll to current joys and start listening to music that i haven't already put in a video but yeah this is i'm terrified so i'll usually just take this and i will drag it directly into the timeline as you can see i'm not going to do that right now because i already edited this video before we get into the video obviously we have a whole bunch of footage and i'm going to bring that up right now i just upload it to my passport this is just what that looks like i have like a video that i exported my end card this is a short film just some random stuff it's it's quite messy this folder right here data is actually where i have more stuff whatever's here that you're looking at right now let me just expand that like so all these folders these are things that i'm currently working on or that i need to do something with i upload my photos from my phone into a folder that is going to be dated and so for this vlog that was actually 2205 because that's dated to the month of may and then also the month of april so this was like this is the beginning of the vlog april and then the end of the vlog is here i don't really bother consolidating the files into like a folder that's like writing vlog 19 which was this one to be honest the system of just uploading it like by month is a lot easier for me especially since i date all of my clips in my videos in here i also have fancy driving footage um, and this is just some footage I took on my camera, like my DSLR, while I was on a drive, so it's just fancier. I moved it off of my SD card, so it was all on my hard drive. This is just my system of organizing my files. You could probably do a better job. These two clips that I'm highlighting, these are actually, this is an intro to writing vlog 19 that I forgot. I never edited it in, and so this kind of was trashed. And this was an outro that I forgot to include in my <laughs> writing vlog 18. I just forgot that I filmed these two things. So I just did disregard these footage, but I didn't delete it. I should probably delete it. As you can see, the first thing that I have here is painting. I'm just going to pause this. Here. So this is painting. And so obviously I didn't want to start the video on a painting. The only writing vlog that doesn't have an intro is writing vlog 17 and that's because i was doing a whole bunch of things and i didn't i couldn't figure out a way to include an intro in that video and it, it made me kind of sad because the intros are my favorite part about these videos because of that i knew i'd want to include something else and i had taken this footage fancy driving footage before i did the painting so i was like perfect i'll use that for the intro so i'm gonna jump into premiere pro now that we've gone over how i organize my files so <laughs> welcome to premiere pro i edit in premiere pro i've been editing in premiere pro for maybe about three years now so i'm familiar with the software. Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve is really good. GIMP, which is a free software that I still use to this day, um, is a good Photoshop alternative, but I use primarily for these videos Premiere Pro and obviously Photoshop for some other things like the thumbnail and some animation frames. You'll notice in the beginning, I don't actually have this file here. This is unlinked. If I turn this off, you'll be able to see. The media here doesn't exist, and that's because I actually deleted this file completely, and so I can't get it back. So I can't show you exactly how I did this intro part, but if there's any missing media, it's just because it was on my old computer and I deleted it during the transfer. A few things that we should go over before we get into breaking down the edit. So I prioritize economical storytelling, especially in the vlogs. I like to make my vlogs enjoyable if you weren't watching them. So if you're only listening to them, I want it to be enjoyable. So I cut out long pauses. Sometimes I'll cut out ums. I, I don't, I don't want long unpolished talking and I'm not a very eloquent speaker sometimes. So I struggle with that a little bit. I like the story to flow. And if you like multitask and aren't looking at the screen, I, I want it to still be enjoyable for you. And there's really no formula to how I come up with a vlog and how I edit it. Um, when I feel like filming a vlog, that's where the vlog starts. So this vlog in particular started, I just started filming my family on a drive. And here's like some footage from that, which we'll go over. So that's where the vlog started. I, and sometimes I start a vlog, like writing vlog four, for example, I'm just walking around my room. And so I'll edit to me walking around my room, preparing for the vlog. Hey, folks.
folks. So I'm back again to finish this writing vlog. Um, or start a new one. I don't know if this is a new one or an old one, but... This day's cold. Formula, wherever it starts, it starts. I don't have like a set way that I start a vlog, just that I will always do an intro unless it's writing vlog 17, which is a bit of a disgrace. However, you know, with that said, I am conscious that I do intros. And so I always keep that in mind whenever I film because I know that whatever I film first has to fit into an intro. So I don't ever pick up a camera and just say, hi guys, welcome to this video. This is gonna be the next writing vlog. I won't do that because I, there's gonna be no room for me to insert an intro. So whether or not I have to be a bit more conscious about what I say, if I crack a joke, that'll like lead into the intro. I always need a space to put an intro. So I will not just start a writing vlog by like taking out my phone and like saying, hi guys, welcome. Some people start their vlogs like that and that's perfectly fine. This is just my, this is my style for my vlogs. Now we can actually get into the breaking down of the edit, which is quite exciting. What we're starting with is this intro and I'm just gonna make the timeline a bit bigger. If this wasn't already clear, this video is probably not gonna be for beginners. Really the crux of how I edit is quite simple and I will show you like how I like cut because basically an edit is just cutting things you don't want and then like moving the clips together. So I will show you how I do that. This video is more to show you like the fancy little stuff that I do. If you were wondering like how do I make a writing vlog like a Rachel Wright's writing vlog and not just like an anybody else writing vlog because I want it to, to be like my brand. And the writing vlogs are where I can create a story and so the story actually comes in the form of the intro. So this intro was actually a new thing that I was experimenting with and I'm going to just expand the screen and play it so you can see it. Okay, so that's essentially the intro. The intro actually runs like all the way till here or so, um, like here. And so then at one point we get into like this, let me turn this down a bit, we get into like this uh, jitter um, wiggle animation. I, like I said, I <laughs> deleted the footage of me holding the Polaroid because I needed space on my SD card. So I can't show you like how I did this exactly, but I, I can try. <laughs> so the crux of this edit is actually right here. Um, this little, these diamond looking thing. And I can make that bigger for you. So all of these diamond little things, these are keyframes, I think. I'm not a big pro on this, but basically what I did is this is a layer mask and I, I masked around this Polaroid photo. It's actually not a Polaroid picture. Um, for a project that I made in high school, I made fake Polaroid photos of like art that I had made. I instead, decided to use keyframes to mask around the green paper. Um, and that's why you can see sort of on the right hand side, you can kind of see that it was like paper pasted down. It's not a perfect job. I didn't do it perfectly well. This is not actually that hard to do. I can link a tutorial on how to create a layer mask and I just like feathered the mask a bit. I can't really show you because I don't have the footage anymore. I'm sorry, but any other tutorial is basically the exact same thing. So essentially you frame by frame like would like hit this like key to the right like every single time and make your way through like individually adjusting the mask around the green paper until you get to the very end and then when you play it back it it would look like this because we're inverting the mask so that would reveal the driving footage underneath so it looks like we're entering the polaroid i think sam colder popularized this technique and people have multiple different ways of doing it but this is the way i did it it's it's obviously a bit more advanced than just beginner but it's quite easy to do so that's how i made this intro this is just kind of like the bells and whistles to be honest and so if we look at the timeline here we have a few things this is just a, this yellow thing is just, I had to take the final cut of this so I could show you what the intro looked like because I don't have the footage anymore. These two things right up here, this red and the yellow, they're the same thing. And so this footage, MVI8055, this is the driving footage, as you can see. That's just literally my family driving on a dirt road. And then we have this sound of a Polaroid. And so sound is like really powerful in film. And even though it's not printing out the Polaroid, you kind of get the same effect as if it was printing out the Polaroid. And this is just a free sound effect that I got on freesound.org. I use a few archives while I'm editing. The first archive is 
Free Music Archive, and that's where I get most of the music. I use Unsplash for stock photography, or uh, stocksnap.io, those are my two favorites, and then freesound.org all the time. If you watched uh, Writing Vlog 17 with the like voicemail at the beginning of those two women talking, that came from freesound.org, and so does this Polaroid thing. And so when we play it back, you kind of have this cool, ah, it's like printing out the Polaroid kind of thing and then we enter the Polaroid. If you want to do this, I, I will link a tutorial. I would recommend, this is not a tutorial on how to do this particular effect, but it, the footage is just of me holding this Polaroid and then I bring it up to the camera and then that that's literally it. And I just made a strategic cut between, you can see it right there. So this is the, you can see the kind of harsh line of the layer mask and then the blurry white of the actual photograph um, as it got closer to the lens. And then I just made a strategic cut into the footage. It's just a transition and you can't really tell that the cut is there. Maybe you can, depending on who you are. And then we jump into the song. So sometimes I will like fade in the song almost, like make the song louder at the part I want to emphasize. I think this, this particular song worked as we just drove into the Polaroid. So I didn't do anything special to it. As you can see, there's no like constant gain or something here. Like usually like I will have like a constant gain, like looking band-aid thing here. I don't have that here. I will show you where I do have it though later on. And so then I just added a title right here. And this is a epigraph almost to the writing vlog. I, I really like doing epigraphs for writing vlogs. This is a Virginia Woolf quote. Making a title in Premiere Pro is really easy. I just go file new legacy title as if I'm recreating this title. Like, so I just press with the text tool. I'll just like, hello, this is a title, but I just changed the font all the time to Garamond. And in this particular time, I, I changed the color to like a light yellow. I will use these things, these buttons to center. Again, this is not really a tutorial on like the little nitty gritty things like this, but if you're wondering what I do to create my titles, that's how I do it. And then I will drag the title in and then suddenly we have a title. And I, I use the legacy title tool. I don't like the new title. The new title feature, which is on the left here, like you can just press it and I don't like it. I don't know how to use it. So I just use the legacy title because that's what I'm used to. But maybe, maybe somebody could convince me otherwise. I don't know. And so the rest of this intro, let me just turn down the music. It's quite, it's, it's quite self-explanatory. This is just driving footage that I cut. I just chose the nicest looking parts of the footage. There's no rhyme or reason to that. Um, and another quote from me, which with the same title. And then we enter this interesting part, which makes the writing vlogs, the writing vlogs. Ever since uh, writing vlog one, we've had the jittering animation for the text. And I will insert a video on how I make that. It's actually quite easy. Hi everyone. So I'm gonna show you how I do wiggle animations. Like I said, I will link a video by DSLR guide on how to do wiggle animation. But I'm in Photoshop. I just created a canvas that is 1920 by 1080 pixels and it's at 300 DPI, which you can see just so that it'll be good quality and won't be super pixelated or anything. So well, I'm gonna start out by actually making this background black just because I make the text white and it'll just be easier for me to see than drawing white on a white background. So I'm just gonna unlock the background. I'm gonna press D to set the paint bucket to black in the foreground and then I'll just fill the background, so it's black. And then I'm gonna create a new layer. I have a keyboard shortcut to do that. That's Control Shift N in Photoshop. And then now I have a brush, which the shortcut is B. I don't use any kind of brush for this. I like to use the textured brushes. These ones come with Photoshop. Um, this is from the Kyle Art Markers set. I used to use the one at the bottom here, watercolor paper. So this particular brush is, let me make my brush white. It has like, a nice texture to it. You can see it if I zoom up, but it kind of made writing kind of difficult. It's kind of skinny, so it gets wide. I used to like that look, but then I would have to, whenever I was doing like the number sign, you can see how like fat the horizontal lines look. So then I would have to like change the size like that. And since I have to write these frames three times, that just got annoying. So I changed it to the standard brush. So this really takes me about two minutes to do. So what I'm gonna do is create a new layer. This was for writing vlog 19. So I'm just gonna write that out. I don't do anything fancy. It's just my handwriting. I'm not too careful with this just because I want it to look kind of messy. It 
kind of adds to the jittering effect. So this is the first frame. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click on the layer and then I'm going to quick export as PNG and I'll just name it writing vlog 19. You can see I already have it, 1.png. And so this is going to automatically export it as a PNG and a PNG has no background. So it's going to end up looking like this because I didn't select this as well, like the black background. I only selected the one layer I wanted to export. That, now that I've done that, I'm going to create another layer just on top of this. If you want, you can go on the original layer and turn down the opacity. I'm quite lazy to do that. I just create a new layer and I just write directly on top of it. it doesn't really matter if I can see very well or not because the whole point of, wave, of a wiggle animation is for it to move so you want to like not draw it perfectly anyway this is the original and then this is the one that I just drew so as you can see it's quite different so if you draw it perfectly on top you're not going to get any wiggle so just be a little bit freeform with it i'm going to do the same thing right click and then quick export as png and now that we have the second frame we're going to just do one more frame i only do three frames some people will do two frames so it's a bit of more of like a back and forth wiggle i kind of want to make it look like it's dancing because it's always in the intro to fancy music and so i think that's a bit more fun so i'm going to create one last layer and now i'm drawing on top of the second frame just so i can get even more movement. Some people will draw again on top of the first frame. I don't really care to turn on and off things. I just want to do it as fast as possible. So now that I'm on the third frame, I'm just going to trace over the second frame. And it doesn't take any time at all. And so then I'm just going to turn off second frame and then export, like I said, the last one. Okay, and now we're in Premiere Pro. This is actually the file for editing this video, <laughs> but because I don't feel like creating a new one, I'm going to show you how I would animate this just in this timeline. We're, we're just gonna move over here and pretend this entire video doesn't exist. And so these are the three that I just drew. I'm just gonna drag this onto the timeline. So as you can see, we have the first frame that I drew and then the second frame is right next to it and then the third frame. I'm going to press Alt on my keyboard, click on the second frame, and then while holding down Alt and while holding down the frame, I'm going to drag it and that's gonna copy it to next to the third frame. So what I have here is I have the first frame, the second frame, the third frame, and then the second frame repeated. And the reason why I repeat the second frame is so that I get more of a clean transition when it loops. So now that I have four frames, I'm going to highlight all four. And like I just did before, I'm going to hold down Alt and then drag it to the right. Now we have eight frames. I'm going to just duplicate this like two more times. There we go. It's perfect. And this is actually going to be, I'll play it back for you. It's going to be actually way too slow and it's not going to look like it's dancing. So we have the first frame and it takes forever to get to the second frame. And then it takes forever to get to the third frame. A lot of people will like, individually like drag the duration and then that would that would change things like it will go by much faster now i don't have the nimble fingers to do that on my keypad i don't use a mouse when i'm editing that might be blasphemy but i don't like using a mouse so there might be an easier way to do this but what i do is now that i have like 25 of these frames i select the entire thing i right click and then i press nest and nesting is essentially just going to group all of those frames together i can actually open the nest and what we can see is that it's the exact same thing that I just nested two seconds ago. So nest is just a group. And if you have a problem in Premiere, just nest and you will fix your problem. So now that all of these frames are grouped together, I'm just going to right click on this nested sequence and I'm going to click speed slash duration and I'm going to speed it up 3000%. 3000 is usually the perfect amount for most songs that I choose, usually by like some stroke of luck. I manage to get it to dance to the beat. I'm always really particular with that to make sure that the wiggle is sort of in line with the song. So now I'm gonna play back this wiggle for you and it's gonna be much faster than before. And that looks really nice. And so depending on how long the intro is, I might duplicate this a few more times and then I'll just adjust it to whatever's needed. And then it just, it looks really cool. That's how I make all my wiggle animations. You don't have to make it all that fancy. Like I said, you could do this on a piece of paper. All you would do is just, you could use a whiteboard to do it and then just individually re redraw the letters and the DSLR guide video that I'm going to link in the description 
will show you exactly how he did that. But that's how I make the intros. It's pretty easy. It really only takes like five minutes. And so here we have one of these band-aid things. I don't know what the technical term for this is. This thing that show, says constant power right here. This is like a little audio transition. What I did here is the music. I always make sure that my audio peaks at about negative 12. Um, and you can see this is this little thing that I've highlighted, this rectangle with the blue around it, this is a, like an audio meter, I guess. And so I always try to get the audio to peak between negative 12 and negative six because I like my videos to be loud enough. And if your videos peak below, like, and what I mean by peak is like, watch what this song does. Like watch this bar when I play the song. You see those little bars? So those bars are like basically showing where it's peaking. I'm not a pro at this, so I might be kind of wrong. Like, so don't don't quote me. Um, I'm not a pro at audio levels, but I want it to peak between negative 12 and negative six, just so it's loud enough and so that people don't have to listen to my videos on like a speaker or something. So the reason I'm mentioning this is because for the audio here, if you right click and you go to audio gain, this is how I change the volume. I just did negative one uh, decibel. Uh, that probably made no difference, so I actually don't know why. <laughs> um, I guess I added... I don't know why, actually, I have... Oh, never mind. Okay, forget everything I said about decibels. The reason why I have this uh, banded here is not because of the volume. The volume doesn't change. Um, I actually cut a part of this song. Um, so the intro of the song is actually much longer. Like this part. That repeats a whole bunch of times, but I needed to, like hurry it up because I didn't want my intro to be long. So I essentially um, cut it at the perfect time so that it would flow into the song. And this is a constant power, a little band-aid, quote unquote, audio transition and constant power will essentially propel the audio quite smoothly. Like it doesn't decrease the volume. It's, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's constant power. It powers directly into the next audio that you've cut. So these two audios, they sound, it sounds like the song. It doesn't sound like I cut it, does it? Like maybe, maybe to some of you it sounds like I cut it, but this is not how the original song sounds. The intro of the song is much longer, but I do that a lot. So many of my vlogs, I've cut the audio. I can link all of them where I've cut the audio if you wanna see more examples of that. And basically how I do that is just a lot of tweaking. I do it with Bummer Friends, um, which I will show you towards the end of this video, but I will essentially just use a lot of constant power, little quote unquote band-aids, aka the audio transitions between my cuts. And I will just like increase or decrease the length of this. Like let's play it if I made this band-aid really long. It still sounds perfect. That's kind of funny. Um, what if we made it like really small? So it d sounds a bit choppier. And if we remove it altogether, do you hear that little like click? I'll play it again. Do you hear the click? And it'll, it'll, it goes away when I add this. This just smooths it out. Some of my favorite things to do are the audio transitions. And we'll move past that. And now we have the exponential fade. So um, as you can see, there's another audio track here, and this is just music. And this is um, Brotherhood by Mon Plaisir, which is a completely free song. And so this is Brotherhood by Mon Plaisir. Instead of just like cutting off the song like this, like getting rid of this um, exponential fade, which sounds exactly like what it is. This is what it would sound like. It would just cut off. That's not very relaxed. What I do, I do this a lot, is I do this sort of cut where the audio from the intro will overlap with another song. You hear that? And then it also overlaps with me speaking. And that's just to sort of smoothen out everything. And that's why I have an exponential fade. This does exactly what it sounds like. If I dragged it, like let's say, if I made it shorter, this is quite a long exponential fade. Sorry, my clicking is so bad. My um, my touchpad on this computer is broken, so it's kind of hard to click. So let's say I made it really, really small. I'll just mute my talking. This is what it would sound like. Like it would go away quite fast, like. But instead, I kind of want it to be very gradual. Hence the very long audio transition. And then, so now we're actually in the vlog itself, and. 
really all I do is order the clips. So in the order I film them is the order in which they appear. And that's really the only thing I have to keep in mind. It's just for the intro purposes. I have to keep in mind that the first clip I film will be the intro. So if it will not work in the context of an intro, I need to change it. This is actually a voiceover, this little audio, these blue, this blue thing that I've selected here. This is a voiceover that I recorded on my phone and then I just imported it. Not really all that important. Again, I will make sure that my speaking will peak at about negative 12 and I will play that so you guys can see it. It's writing vlog. See? Right now I'm actually working on a gouache painting that I did of It's my peaking character. right between negative 12 and negative 6 so I know it'll be loud enough. Usually if I don't have to like put the volume all up at 100% and I to hear myself I know it's it's fine um, but that's just one thing that you can do and so I'm just gonna skip past this. This is pretty self-explanatory. I just have the music running in the background and I just quieted it like I made a transition using one of those little band-aids again. That's pretty self-explanatory. We're going to move past to some of the highlighted parts I wanted to talk about. Sometimes I'll like obviously like speed up clips like this is a sped up clip. Alice Pajani. I didn't feel like sketching it because I just wanted to do a gouache painting. That's really easy. You just right click and then click speed duration and then speed it up however much you want like this one is sped up by 1000 percent so that's pretty self-explanatory and then we have the bummer friends brownie montage so this was supposed to have a lot of energy so when i'm thinking about an edit i didn't really want the brownie making to be relaxing i wanted it to be very upbeat i wanted viewers to pay attention and be like oh they're making brownies and so when i thought of this edit i was like bummer friends by surf curse perfect song for this and you'll see why is lagging sorry here we go <laughs> so i did a lot of things just there i first of all spliced up bummer friends a lot like i was talking about how i splice up songs that's another example of splicing but what i want to talk about more is this transition between the brownie making and the let's say the act two of the vlog so what i did here is i cut off the footage on the beat like that and then we go into may 6th which is like the act two so we cut to a black screen and then the first thing that you're going to hear besides the bummer friends in the background is the sound of this wind chime so this is an example right here of a J cut. So do you see how what I'm selecting makes sort of the shape of a J? So what I've done here is the title takes up the space. So we're looking at the title, but then we transition into looking at these forget me nots. But in order to make this transition like sound good, I create a J cut so that the audio from the forget me nots plays while underneath the title not at the very beginning as you can see there's some there's some silence or just some of bummer friends but then i overlap it with this sound of the forget me nots i hope that made sense that was probably super convoluted i can link my favorite videos on different kinds of cuts j cuts l cuts but i mostly use the j cut in my writing vlogs and then we move into more of the belts and as you can see i'm sort of using that as like an audio like almost like the music behind these other clips that obviously while i'm in my bedroom you're not gonna be able to hear the wind chime so i just removed the audio from this particular clip and i just use the audio of the wind chime so that's quite fun the brownie montage has now completed now i'm actually going to show you how i edit and i'm going to use this as clip as an example the reason why i showed you how i do all of the other stuff first is because this stuff is quite subjective it's up to the keyboard shortcuts you like if you like keyboard shortcuts some people might want to use their mouse some people might not want to personally for me the more i can do on keyboard shortcuts the better i don't do everything with a keyboard shortcut though so this is quite subjective and it's it's also quite simple and is the same on every editing software the keyboard shortcut might be different but editing is essentially just cutting and then moving things. So this is how I would do that. So let's look at this clip. Hey everybody, so today's video is going to be a writing vlog as the title suggests and 
And so I actually took an unexpected hiatus off of writing. So that's an example. You can see it was a bit awkward. I had the camera sort of like, I kind of hit it by mistake. While I'm editing, I often speed up. So I would never watch this like this and then like use my mouse to use this tool and then cut like this and then cut like this and then use this moving tool and then delete it and then like select this and move it over. I personally don't like to edit like that. I used to edit like that when I first started out. But when I figured out keyboard shortcuts about last year it was over for everybody i'm gonna take you how i do a first pass which is the rough cut a second pass which is the finer cut and a third pass which is the final cut on this one clip so the first pass okay the rough cut is to get everything in order cut out the white noise create a foundation of the story and obviously i'll do this for the entire video and it'll look something like this less of like the audio will be in place and less of like these titles will be in place but just like these two little things that I've highlighted right here, those will be in order and that's what the rough cut will look like. And usually I will play that back at regular speed so I can re-listen to what I'm watching. Or if I want to, I will speed it up just slightly. And to do that, you pressed shift L, um, at least for Premiere Pro. So like, we'll play this and I'll speed it up. Days, I don't know, it was a few days um, that I took off of writing. <laughs> um, but this time so that's actually sped up a little bit. So sometimes I will speed up for the rough cut. Most of the time the rough cut is played in regular, normal, standard time. So I'm gonna show you how I cut this video. So let's just pretend this is the beginning of the vlog. Hey everybody, so today's video is going to be a writing vlog as the title suggests. So this sounds good. I'm just gonna keep going. Okay, and then I do this breath and push my hair back. So what I'm gonna do is... And so on Premiere, um, that's, I know I just finished that word, so I'm going to press in on Premiere, and press play, and I just sort of did this hair push thing, and then an, a breath, and so that'll sound kind of awkward if I keep it in, I know. So I want to press O, and that will create an out point. And then I will press this button, I guess it's the quotation mark button on my keyboard, and that's going to delete what I've just selected using the in and out points. This is so fast, it's a fast way of editing and I absolutely recommend it if you can figure out a shortcut where you can press in, out, and then one other button, it'll save you so much time than taking like the razor tool and then like manually cutting it and then like taking the move tool or whatever it's called and then deleting it and then manually moving this over. It will immediately do it for you. So I highly recommend if you can figure out that shortcut um, for whatever software you're doing. I don't know if Final Cut has that as an option, but it's it's a great shortcut. So now we have this. And so I actually took an unexpected... So there's a cut right there. Of writing. Uh, I literally wasn't planning it. <laughs> if you saw my last writing vlog, you would have seen that I purposefully took a break from writing, but it was only about... I think in real life it was about two days, but for some reason it was like four days. I don't know. It was a few days um, that I took off of writing. And then I had an um, and it kind of broke up my thoughts, so I'm going to delete it. And you can hear on the playback while I'm scrubbing on it, um, which is like moving the left and right arrows on my keyboard, um, it'll make a sound. So I kind of listen to the ends of words and for the ends of words. And, um, that I took off. and so I hear um. Right? And that's the end of the um, so I'm going to press um, out and then I'm going to press the quotation mark button and it'll get rid of it. So another shortcut that I use um, all the time in Premiere is the Q button. And Q is going to delete everything to the left of the last cut. Right? And in contrast, I will also use the W key and W will delete everything to the right. This is the last cut that we made it's going to delete everything to the right. And those are the keyboard shortcuts that I use. That's just essentially how I edit. That's why I didn't really want to make this video on how I edit because that's all I do. That's all I do. It's usually just in and out, um, in, out, pressing the quotation marks. Uh, oh, I realize I said something that I just want to completely cut out. I'll just press Q. Oh, there's something to the right of this that I need to cut out. Like, let's say like I turn the camera back around um, and I want to delete that part. I'll just press W. There you go, done editing. So that's how I do a rough cut. So the finer cut is where I will actually be looking out for audio levels. I will add titles. Usually I'm too lazy to like add the dates. Like, let me find a date. As you can see, there's this title here and ignore my face, but it says April 30th, 2020. This is just a regular title. I'm usually too lazy to add these in when I'm doing the rough cut. And so after when I'm doing the second cut, 
I will add in the, the dates of when I filmed. I will also look for things I want to cut or add, usually stuff I want to cut because I don't want the video to be too long. This video is quite long. I think it's like almost 30 minutes. And then that's when I will also draw the intro animation that I talked to you about earlier. I sometimes will combine the rough and the finer cut and do titles at the same time, but usually like I'm too too lazy to do it. So usually the rough cut just consists of me putting the clips in order and cutting the clips up so that I sound more coherent. And then the second pass is me adding the titles, making sure the audio peaks at negative 12. So what I would do is like, let's just click on this random clip. Let's let's right click and see how much I um, turned up the volume. So I turned it up by 10 decibels. So I'm just gonna just like turn it back to zero. So like, it's actually quite quiet in comparison. In a big hiatus off of writing. And like, let's ch check the peak. Where does it, it peak? Like it peaks at like, like negative 18. And that's not really where I want it to peak. So I'm gonna just add 10. I like my videos to be louder than quieter. So if it peaks a bit too much, like I I prefer that than it being too quiet. And so yeah, that's really what the this second pass is for. And I will always watch it sped up. I can watch the video as quickly as possible. And then the third pass of the edit would be the final cut. And the final cut is what you're looking at right now. Um, this. And so what, what makes a final cut a final cut? To be honest, it's not really that complex. It's really just my final rewatch of the video where I'm like, Yep, it looks good. <laughs> it's the cut where I don't make changes. I always watch it sped up except for the intros. I love watching my intros, so I always watch them at real time and it also makes sure that the intro is good um, and that I can hear the song properly and stuff. That's that's really the entire process. So I know that that was a lot of talking and I'm, I'm so sorry if it made no sense, but that's, that's essentially what goes through my head when I edit a video and editing is probably my second biggest passion besides writing. And so it's really not all that fancy, but that's essentially what goes on in Rachel's brain when she wants to get down to a video. This is what it'll end up looking like. And then I obviously I will add my outro. That's how Rachel writes edits her videos like I can like I said edit an hour and a half video in 25 minutes do the rough cut and then I'll have the entire thing exported and uploaded within two hours and that's pretty fast the only thing that differs from how I edit my vlogs like what I showed you with like the in and out points and the quotation mark key and stuff that's exactly how I edit my sit down videos but I just color grade those so that's an extra step I never color grade my vlogs just because I don't have the patience for that the export settings I just do uh, h.264 if you're wondering and I use the YouTube 1080p preset. I film in 4k, but I export in 1080p. I couldn't be bothered to export in 4k. What I do is right before I am going to export the video, I will scrub through the video and try to find like a part that I think would make a good thumbnail. And then I press this button here. So let's say like I wanted my outro <laughs> to be my thumbnail. I press export frame and then I would save it um, as like whatever I could say like thumbnail. Like, but yeah, and then I would press okay. And then I will drag that into Photoshop. My thumbnail style has come to be after just some tweaking so we can just take a look at my thumbnail so i have a youtube archive on my computer this is the thumbnails and this is the thumbnail for that video so this is just um actually a still that i took of the motorcycle in the intro like there's these guys riding motorcycles in the intro and i just took that screenshot and then this is a selfie that i took of myself it has nothing to do with the video it's just a selfie i took and i just removed myself quite hastily from the background you can tell if you zoom up like it's not a very delicious removal job. And then I often, if I cut myself out and put myself on thumbnails, will do like a little outline of myself using a pencil brush in Photoshop. And then I just used a marker brush to write this. It's really not that fancy. And for my thumbnails, I always use a yellow and blue color scheme. I find myself often using that. And then I just put a Lightroom preset on it just so that it looks good. If you're trying to get better at thumbnails, like these are just a few examples, I would really just recommend playing around with it. You'll get your style at some point. Like I said, I used Ashley's lens as an inspiration back when I was just getting started with YouTube and thumbnails and stuff. And I, now I think I've just gotten a style that I use um, after just a few years of experimentation. Like this was one of my favorites. I just like the colors in it for the moth work video. And I, I really like this Q&A thumbnail too just sort of playing around with composition. I always like to put the text on the left-hand side of the video, um, which is funny because the writing vlog 19 was, is on the right-hand side. The reason why I put it on the left-hand side most of the times is because the YouTube, like the time for the video, like on mobile will cover 
your text. But that's how I design thumbnails and how I edit videos. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope this was helpful for you. It was a lot of fun to make. Actually, I was kind of worried it was gonna just make no sense, but I hope that this is helpful in some sort of way and gives you a bit of an inside scoop on how I go about editing my videos since it's literally like my favorite thing to do. If you have any more questions about video editing, let me know in the comments and I will try to clear things up as best as I can. But thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye.